1,800 calories. Clocking in at just a little bit more than just one Burger King breakfast platter, 1,800 calories is the current threshold for undernourishment around the world. And while one Burger King meal may seem like an outrageously small threshold to some, more than 10% of the world's population goes to bed undernourished every single night. Unfortunately, with the threat of a complete climate crisis on our horizon, it is that same group of people who are at the highest risk of starvation due to unpredictable and lessening crop yields. It is clear that the time is now to begin the upward battle against food insecurity before it is too late. Hello, I am your host, Mike Lake, and in today's preview, I will be talking with Dr. Anudeep Sandamudi, co-founder and chief scientist at Driti Biosolutions, a company utilizing carbon sequestration and composite protein isolate using the miracle tree to battle both the impending climate crisis and food insecurity around the world. Innovation, resiliency, discovery. Join Mike Lake, president and CEO of Leading Cities, as we explore the technologies shaping the possibilities of our future with a preview of tomorrow. Hello and welcome, Dr. Anadeep Sandamudi. Thank you so much for joining us today on this episode of Preview of Tomorrow. And of course, I want to take a moment to welcome all of our guests, uh, whether they're watching or listening. Uh, I am just so excited to introduce you all to Dr. Anadeep Sandamudi, or Anu as his friends call him. He is the co-founder and chief scientist of Driti Biosolutions, a company addressing both the hunger and climate crises with their very own composite protein isolate. Now, we're going to get into what that means in a few minutes, but Anu, tell us, how was it that you were, were inspired or motivated to, to focus on this, this crisis of nutrition that so many people around the world face? Uh, hi, Mike. Good evening. Uh, that's where I am from, and good morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, so on this specific uh, part of the journey, so where do we started this data? It's just quite fascinating because I work in a research institute uh, from India where that institute particularly focuses on food. Hmm. And we have lots of brainstorming sessions happening on food. And uh, one of the brainstorming sessions was malnutrition. Right? There's hunger uh, everywhere around the world, especially when you come to third world countries or developing countries. It's a huge problem of hunger. And that is what it hit us, it hit me. Like, can't we do something about this? And that is when we started uh, this complete duty by solutions as a solution for the hunger. Well, it, it, as you say, it is a huge problem and it's it affects way too many people, let's face it. Um, I mean, hunger is, is actually a solvable problem in, in the world with all the resources that we have, the financial resources, it, and yet it still hasn't been resolved. Tell us a little bit more about this challenge that so many people face every single day. Yes, so as you said, it's right. Hunger, it's a solvable challenge, probably with all the resources we have. Yes, absolutely. But uh, I will bring a term here, something called as hidden hunger. Mm. That's what we generally discuss uh, in among our groups. There is hunger, there is hidden hunger. Hidden hunger is the undernourishment, right? Probably the child or an adult doesn't get the proper uh, proteins, proper minerals, or uh, proper fatty acids. So among all these things, if you stack one by one, the protein hunger hits high, right? It is in the highest point. Probably developing countries, kids are not, they are not very well protein fed. The adults are not very well protein fed. They always have this deficiency of proteins. Um, and and what, what does it mean to have a deficiency of protein though? Correct, yes. Uh, what it means to have deficiency of protein uh, is something 
which you can see with the naked eye and the people which have deficiency they will definitely feel it one mm. people will not feel complete with their life when they have deficiency of proteins uh, per se they are weak they can't compete in sports with a well nourished person mm-hmm. and probably they intellectually not sound with well nourished person so there is always a hindrance when it comes to protein malnutrition i mean a human if he is protein malnourished probably he cannot be at his best and yeah. we believe everyone everyone in the world has a right to be at their best well said certainly well said you know I, i'm thinking about this i mean obviously a a a real tragedy in in you know third world nations as you point out where hunger alone and and protein deficiency is it could be a life and death situation but does this also apply to for instance those who are on vegan diets absolutely so uh, that is where probably i would be going uh, on a vegan diet yes there is protein uh, uh, deficiency uh, particularly and you rightly pointed out this could be a life and death in many instances in yeah. many instances yeah which uh, probably as a very optimistic person i really don't want to bring that up and i i really hope that it is not a life and death problem but it is in fact yeah it, it certainly is uh, now tell me a little bit more about the miracle tree um this, this i mean it has such a a great sound to it but it's something i'm not familiar with but tell tell us all more about the miracle tree correct yes uh, so i mean that was the vision of the company itself all together carbon neutral sustainability and protein security uh, nutrition security uh, precisely and when we are uh, brainstorming this within the co-founders and the team uh, of uh, the startup what we are uh, working uh, uh, developing now there is a pro- we have developed a protein isolate correct we will solve the global hunger but how do we develop a sustainable protein isolate a protein isolate that is carbon neutral that that itself was the major question for us so how do we do that we went through lot of literature lots and lots of literature then we found out a particular tree called drumstick tree moringa oleifera scientific name so in english it is called drumstick tree probably i don't know uh, it is there uh, in other part of the world but in asia africa it's this tree is very prevalent people has been consuming its fruits leaves and now it is considered as a super food the drumstick leaves is considered as a super food now it is all across the europe and western market as well why why is it a miracle tree it, it is a miracle tree because it requires so less amount of water to grow mm it sequesters carbon more than any known uh, best sink in the world uh, probably it is 50 times more than uh, general habitat the carbon sequester is in capacity and when there is a tree which grows very well with very less water in hot climatic conditions and that's a tree which sequesters the most carbon which is present i mean that that's mind blowing that that is miracle and are these trees harvested in in large quantities or the mostly just uh, where they exist in nature yes so they these trees are existing uh, in africa and asia predominantly at the backyard of the home and currently they in india we started cultivating these trees okay because of its uh, oil content which is very very uh, expensive they use it in uh, cosmetics huh yeah and that is that is how this whole farming of these trees came up in india wow and so you've taken this tree you've you've determined that it has a protein that can be isolated is that absolutely yes yes and and that tell us a little bit about that protein and what that means for those who might be facing a protein uh deficiency or or malnutrition correct yes so we isolated this proteins uh, from this particular uh, plant 
tree uh, as uh, we are talking. We isolated this one. Now we have a protein isolate with 30% dietary fiber. Hmm. So dietary fiber is very essential for us to absorb uh, the minerals which is present in the food. Now this is a superfood that uh, we are giving to the people in India currently where they can mix this powder into their regular food like probably they bake a bread they can mix in the bread and they do curry they just mix in the curry wow. so they get good protein does it does it add any flavor or does it change the flavor in any way that that's the best part of this it doesn't have any flavor it is very bland in taste so that's the best part so you can basically give a protein boost to just about anything by sprinkling some of this powder into it. Absolutely, yes. Wow, and and I'm uh, given that it's in powder form, it sounds shelf stable and uh, you know easily um, stored. Correct. So it has a shelf life of two years. Absolutely no problem. It's it's just great. The product uh, is good, and yeah. It has a very good stability. You're right. So it's not just a miracle tree. This is a miracle powder. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I, I mean, really, I, I can just see how something so simple as a protein packed powder can really change the nutritional um, access that folks in, in too many places around the planet uh, just lack that kind of access. Correct. What you mentioned some of the impacts of being malnourished and, and not having enough protein. Um, how long would it take for someone who is is you know protein deficient uh, using this powder? How would it long would it take for them to basically revive themselves? And and, and can those previous effects be reversed? Correct. We did a study on this uh, particular. Uh, a topic and we used uh, our protein isolate only as a complete protein source for one month for an mm -hmm. athlete and we studied his body mechanism and DEXA scan wow. and within one month his lean body mass has increased by 1.2 kgs. Wow. Just, lean body mass, just protein body mass increased 1.2 kgs. That is something exceptional. That is exceptional. Kind so, of. I mean, the application, we, we focused a lot, and in, in, I think with good reason, uh, on those who have lack of access to, to quality food or, or protein. Um, but the, the use possible use applications for this, it, it, it's not just the poor and malnourished. This, this is something that any of us can be benefiting from. Absolutely. I like the uh, terms that you especially use. Uh, you said the access for the protein uh, yeah. and you said uh, not only for malnourished, probably it, it's for everyone out there. I like the terms because when we start this project, so we thought the main gap that we want to fill that we realized that it is not, we need a, a very si simple and easier solution that is accessible first for everyone. It is not to have a very limited source. Yeah. So it should be good and it should be accessible. I, I like that term very much. And yes, when you said it is for everyone, yes, it is for flexitarians who can who converts from meat to uh, vegan at particular times just to have a very good carbon score on their uh, footprint. So we could develop vegan meat out of this and vegan egg out of this. Well, so you just mentioned something that's worth highlighting a little bit, although we have very limited time left, is there is a huge um, climate and environmental impact. Uh, just hearing what you described as needing less water uh, for this miracle tree. Um, and, and when you think about protein, we, we all know that cattle, for instance, is, is some of the worst in, in terms of carbon and, and climate impact. Um, so you're, you're tackling not just a hunger and, and malnutrition issue, you're doing it in a green, sustainable, and climate-friendly way. Absolutely, correct. So that is what we realized 
when we develop a technology, probably it has to be green. And I really like the word green again there. I mean, I, I somehow like the word terms you come up with. And the green technology is what we are using. And we say there is a source which is very inspiring from the source. It has got so much story to tell the source, the tree itself. Like it may be carbon neutral, it may be less water that it takes. It has a story to tell. Now we are developing a technology and got a product. Now the product has a story to tell. It's very good, stability, it is bland, it mixes with other products, yes. Now the gap where the technology, what we are developing the product is a green technology now. Mm -hmm. Conventionally, for any other protein isolates, they use spray drink technology and other technologies where they use lots of water again. Yeah. But we use very, very limited amount of water in our technology and our technology is a very green technology. We don't use acids, we don't use base, we don't use solvents, we don't use chemicals. It's a green technology. We don't harm the environment. So our tree has a story, product has a story and technology has a story. So green production, green manufacturing, I love it. I love it. So let me, this is a question I ask all of our guests and we have just a minute left here, but yeah. looking out 10, 20, 50 years into the future and everybody in the world has access to, to this miracle powder. Uh, yeah. What does that mean? What, give us a sense of the impact this product, this solution can have for the world or for the person. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so by the year 2050, the statistics says our food should increase by two times, our water resource should be increased by three times for the population which will be at 2050, which is quite impossible. So mm. this product, I mean this tree, probably will make it possible by the 2050 to feed all the 10 billion population that comes in 2050 sustainably. Wow, truly amazing. I, I really want to thank you, not just for the time you've given to this episode of Preview of Tomorrow, but for the work you're doing. I mean, you're saving lives, whether that's those who are uh, malnourished and, uh, you know, suffering from hunger to those who will in the future who might just avoid the climate crisis that uh, that we're facing at the moment. So, I mean, you truly are not just changing people's lives. You're changing the, the world. And I can't thank you enough for that. And we're so excited to have you here on Preview of Tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for giving me this time and uh, making up uh, to this uh, preview. And thank you for tuning in to this episode of Preview of Tomorrow. Listeners like you are essential to advancing our efforts to drive resiliency and sustainability for all. I ask that you give us a rating on Apple Podcasts or whichever streaming platform you prefer. Your feedback helps us to grow and share these brief previews of what life in the future can be. In addition to thanking our guests today, I want to thank Peter Roy and Demetria Bridges for making this podcast possible. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and encourage others to also join us each week in previewing the possibilities of tomorrow. Preview of Tomorrow is brought to you by Leading Cities, a global nonprofit driving resilience and sustainability for all by unleashing the potential of the world's cities. Join them at leadingcities.org.